What's good, Smokeaholics? Merry Crema. It's December 25th, 2020. We almost through this thing, y'all. But in the meantime, today, surf and turf. We got these beautiful steaks. We got these lobster tails. And we got these Argentinian red shrimp. We got some beautiful asparagus. And over here, that's gonna make us a nice lemon butter sauce to drizzle all over the steak and the asparagus. Ride with us. All right, we are back. And before we get ready to season up these steaks and process these lobster tails, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go. So we have some ribeye and then we have some petite chuck steaks here. And what we are going to do is we're going to drizzle them with some oil, just like we always do, so our rub will stick. Don't be afraid to get that oil on there. This will also help when it gets to the grill to make it non-stick. This beautiful big baby right here belongs to Papa. We're gonna start with a little bit of garlic salt. I got something kind of cool here for a little unusual Papa flavor. This is orange pepper. Cajun seasoning, which by now y'all probably figuring out that I love. The smaller steaks, you really don't, it really doesn't matter, but this big baby right here, you gotta make sure you're getting the sides and everything. That's a Christmas steak right there, if I've ever seen one. A little paprika. Paprika always is good just to help with color. And this here is a smoked paprika. When roasting meat, grilling meat, smoking meat, paprika is king for color anyway. Then we're going to hit them with a little coarse ground black pepper. It's like I told y'all on the last video involving beef. Black pepper, black pepper, black pepper. So you get it all over and press, especially on this big baby. He can take a lot of seasoning. This is a thick cut of meat. If you season it lightly, you're not going to have any flavor. So you want to get it on there. Make sure you get those sides, like I said. Also, this black pepper is going to help make a nice crust. A lot of times I see people make steak and the steak has no color, no crust. That is a boring steak. When you get a, even if you're doing it in a pan, if you're doing it on a grill, if you're doing it on a smoker, if you're doing it on a smoker, you want to start the smoker hot or either finish the smoker hot so that you can build a crust on that steak. What is a steak without a crust? Have you ever been to a steakhouse and the steak didn't have a crust? No. So why would you cook your steak? with no crust, no color. Crust and color is what you're looking for on the steak. But today, I'm gonna show you how to achieve that. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So we flip them over, and we're just gonna do the same thing on this side. All right, and there you have it. The steaks are rubbed and ready for the grill. Let's move on to lobster. Oh, y'all called me? A little whiskey today. Lobster tails. Now, to process these lobsters, what you will need is a pair of kitchen shears. You wanna get your kitchen shears and you're gonna cut up this backbone right here. Up the spine, shall I say. It's not a bone. Cut this shell. Get right underneath the shell. We're gonna cut all the way down to the tail. Right about there. And we're gonna do that on each one. Gonna cut 
cut up the shell all the way down to the tail. Notice I have these sitting on ice because they are sitting out. It is seafood. We always want to think about food safety when dealing with food. So we want to keep this below 41 degrees so nobody in my house gets sick. I do the same thing at the restaurant for y'all. I don't want nobody to get sick. Food safety is first. Now what you want to do is peel off these first two rings of shell. Peel that off. I'm just gonna sit it there for the time being. Sit it there for the time being. I know a lot of people are intimidated by lobster. Don't. You can overcook it, but if you got yourself a good meat thermometer, you want to get it to about 145, 150 degrees, and you'll be golden. So now that we got that peeled off, what you want to do is on this underside, you want to get your finger in here and release the meat from the shell itself. We're going to get that finger in there, we're going to release that meat all the time while pressing down on the other shell and then you'll see that good lobster meat will rise out of there just like that you see this string here this must be removed you're gonna grab that remove that that's a nasty little line right there and then we're gonna And that's that. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two and we'll be right back for seasoning. All right, we's back, we's back, we's back. As you can see, I have prepped the other two lobster tails. We have them ready for seasoning. And what we're gonna do on here is some Old Bay. And seafood and Old Bay go together like hand and glove. If you don't know about Old Bay, you better figure it out. What we're gonna do is we wanna get the underside of this lobster too. We want flavor to be everywhere. We're gonna hit that also with a little Cajun seasoning. Same thing. All right, we got them. And only on the top and bottom, I mean on the top, not the bottom, we're going to hit them with just a little bit of sea salt because lobster meat is not very thick. We do not want to over season it, but you do want that pop of flavor. So I'm going to hit it with a little sea salt and you know what? Yeah, and a little black pepper. And these are ready for the grill along with the steaks. I'm gonna season that asparagus, but you guys don't need to see that. Olive oil, salt, and pepper. Those shrimp, we're gonna deep fry. You won't see that. Maybe another time I'll go over a fry shrimp video. Everybody pretty much know how to fry shrimp. Season cornmeal, hot grease. We're gonna come back, the grill will be lit, and I'll show y'all what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a little wood on that thing so we can get some flames jumping, and it's gonna be lit. Be back. All right, people, we are outside at the grill, and as you can see, this thing is lit. Me, I cook with wood. That's what we do. We got a few pecan logs here. We're gonna grill steaks, we're gonna grill shrimp. We looking for flavor. So I'm gonna throw a couple of people corn logs on here. We want big flame, we want flavor. I'm gonna throw my grill grate back on. We're gonna let it heat up and then we're gonna clean this thing. I got my brush here. I always want a clean grill, man. Do not grill on a nasty grill with the stuff that you had on it last time. Clean your grill, people. Clean your grill. Don't let nobody tell you that's flavor or none of that bull crap. Clean that grill, man. We were talking earlier about crust. 
and this is what's gonna build your crust is heat a lot of times people grill steaks and they grill it just with charcoal you have no flames if you have no flames to kiss that meat you're not gonna have that that that, that char or that flavor once we get them steaks out here and that fat start dropping down them flames gonna hop and that's gonna give us exactly what we're looking for so let me try to add a little piece a few pieces of wood we use the whole bag of kings for charcoal so we can get that flame up and that's what we're working with we're gonna go in the house we're gonna grab those steaks and we'll be back show you how we put this thing together oh hey welcome back we are out here at the grill i got the steak we got the asparagus look at that butter sauce it's already starting to come together garlic butter a little parsley a little cajun seasoning and some lemons but we're gonna get these steaks going i know you saw my cigar i'm also a cigar aficionado and tonight i am smoking the judge by my father so if i got anybody else on here that loves cigars hit me up in the comments let me know what you like let me know what i should try all right we're gonna get these steaks on we're gonna put big baby right over here in the hot spot he is gonna take the longest these smaller steaks I'm gonna put them over here where they can get some heat and then we gonna move them as you can see I got my grill set up for zone cooking so I have one side lit and the other side not and that purpose is so once something is done I can move it maintain a little warmth but cut off the cooking process so I can essentially start the rest before I even get inside a general rule of thumb for steak if you're looking for a mid to medium rare it's two minutes per side on a small steak my house is divided I've got a youngster my youngest daughter she likes her steaks just like mine medium my wife and everybody else pretty much prefer closer to a well done well I say my wife want a well done everybody else is a medium well so my steak, I'm looking for a mid. That's a thick steak, so it's gonna take more than two minutes per side. We're just gonna let it roll. We're gonna build this crust. We're gonna let it do its thing. In a minute, we're gonna get that asparagus on. Look at that. Flame just beautiful, right? I love cooking with fire, man. Nothing like it. We're gonna let these go for about three minutes. We're gonna give them a, a turn of about 180. And when we get ready to flip them, we'll come back and let y'all see what we're working with. Stay tuned. All right, we are back, we are back, we are back. As you can see, man, it's lit. The steaks have been turned. Look at that. Oh my God. What we gonna do now? We gonna butter base these babies. We gonna hit them all with some of this good lemon garlic cajun butter we got going right here look at this here man big baby watch yourself on them flames flames love fat look at that now you see what i mean when i say crust that's what we're looking for what we're gonna do now is right over the open flame we're gonna come with our lobster you know why? Because we ain't scared. We coming with our lobster. Right over the open flame. It ain't gonna stay there long. We got our asparagus on. We doing our thing. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move all these smaller steaks over here. I'm gonna move Big Baby out of harm's way. Because I don't want to overcook him and I don't want to over him. But I still want him to cook. So as you can see, he's still over the flame. But it's low heat where he at. The other steaks is low heat where they at. But they still cooking. And we're going to grill our lobster for a second. Let the lobster get in the game. We're going to close the door for just a minute. Let everybody get some heat. Uh-oh, I lost the asparagus. And then when we come back, we'll show y'all what we got going. Man, let me tell y'all something. I'm finna raise this grill up and show y'all something that I normally wouldn't show too many people because I don't want folks ringing my doorbell, calling my phone, asking for a plate. But y'all smokeaholics. 
I love Smokeaholics. I love y'all. So I'm going to bring y'all with me. Watch this. Look at Big Baby. I've been nursing Big Baby. I've been butter basting Big Baby. Big Baby should be a perfect medium right now. That crust that we was talking about, that's what we got going on here. Now see, I can press in the middle and I know he just right. So I'm gonna get him all the way over here out the way so he can start his rest. Everybody else, looking good i got mama steak back here getting a little char on her because i want to make sure she well done because mama like well done everybody else sitting at about a proper medium well and that's the way they like theirs we don't want no dry steaks around her actually that's mama right there I'm gonna move him let him sit at medium well everybody else sitting at about medium well and that's the way everybody else like they steak so what we gonna do is we're gonna pull this whole situation off the grill. We're gonna take it inside. Them Argentinian red shrimp, I'm gonna fry them up. And when we come back, when y'all see me next, we're gonna plate. Ride with me. All right, we are back. It is time for the plating. Y'all know how we do on Smokeaholic TV. But let me show y'all something. Oh my God, everything is rested. Everything is ready to go. You see how I put a char on those lemons? That brings out the sweetness of the fruit, the natural sugars, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to plate. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay some asparagus down, alternating colors. I'm showing you stuff that can wow your guests, people. You, the, the type of cooking I do, or the type of plating I do, is to wow your guests, wow your people. So you see this, we got alternating colors on this asparagus. I got some beautiful white asparagus, and I got some beautiful green asparagus. We're gonna come right next to that asparagus with one of these lobster tails. Check this out. Bam, right there. Next to that asparagus, we're gonna come with a lobster tail. And then, right next to that, we're gonna come with a charred lemon. You see how we, see what I mean? When I say wow, then we're gonna pull Big Baby out. Cause Big Baby gonna allow us to take some slices out to put on that plate. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna come just like this. Look at that. Medium well all day long. We're gonna take these slices, we're gonna fan them out like that, and we're gonna lay it right across that asparagus. Just like that. Oh wow, you see what I mean? When I say presentation, and then we're gonna come across with some of this lemon and garlic butter, and we're gonna go right across that steak. And we're gonna hit that lobster. Oh, loud, loud, loud. I wish you could smell what I smell. And just like that, we have Smokeaholic Surf and Turf. Ain't that pretty? Now just since y'all with me, I'm gonna taste this steak and see what these flavors is like. Tell you what, you ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell up out of here. Surf and turf, smoke all this TV style. Until next time, peace.